Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm still sunburn. I mean like, what is going on? It has not even reached 80 degrees in Chicago yet. I'm telling you, like seriously, this is ridiculous. But it's fitting because today we have a desert cactus tour. I am gonna give you guys a tour of every single cacti I own. I have over 50 different species of cactus from all over the United States and I'm really excited to share these with you. Now when I say all over the United States I mean I bought them all over the United States but they're grown obviously all around the world. I'm going to try to pronounce these right but I did make sure that I have a name tag included for every cactus you see here. I'm fairly certain that these are the correct species of cacti. If you see one and you're more familiar with cactus than I am, leave it in the comment section below and let me know if it may be mislabeled. Cacti are so hard, especially when some of them look very similar to identify until they bloom. And a lot of the times cacti don't bloom for me in Chicago. They bloom in the desert where they're grown outside in nature and in their natural habitat, not in little terracotta containers in the tundra. <laughs> that is Chicago. So I am going to share these with you and I'm so excited because a lot of you guys have been requesting this tour for a long time and I hope you enjoy it. Okay we're gonna start with my teak bench here. This is my teak bench. My kids drew me some pictures there. I used to have all of my cacti on here at one point until my collection grew and then I had to expand. So I put this Ikea shelf, I'll link the um, shelf below if you guys wanna check it out. But I put this in my office. I'm sorry that it's backlit. I'm wondering if I should close the blinds. But these two shelves here are actually all also dedicated to cactus. I also have a couple on my desk. I have a one in a stand back there that we'll show you. And then I have a couple on my wall. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna start here. This is probably one of the tallest cacti I have. This is my Euphorbia Eritrea, and it's pretty huge. It's big. <laughs> Jay bought this for me, let's do a size comparison, from a cactus shop in the city for our anniversary last year. And it's lived in this pot. All of these cacti have lived in terracotta, mostly inside, since I got them. Okay. Over here, this doesn't have a label, it's just a cute little succulent I'm growing. This is my lithop, which is not a cactus, but it's in the desert family. Here we have a red spine, Pylososerius, which is really cool. It's got like these distinctive red spines on it, which is pretty awesome. We have a woolly torch cactus or a silver cactus, and that's the species name. This one's pretty cool. I like the silver torch. They get huge in the desert, grown in the ground, like gigantic. Taller than people, for sure. Back here, we have a Mammillaria, mm, yeah, not gonna try to pronounce that. This was another gift from Jay, and it's also gotten pretty big. I have it staked up with a stick because it's tipping over. <laughs> if you look at it from this side, it's a little crooked, but um, it's doing fine. It's living its best life in there. This is just a little Haworthia. Then we have a little corn cob cactus which is super cute. I love corn cob cactus when they get to be really big and crazy. Another little succulent. Here is an Easter cactus. It's like a little barrel. And then here we have a Euphorbia decarii. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but this thing is so cool. The leaves on this, I've talked about this before, needs a little bit of maintenance but the leaves on this thing are super thick. Even though they don't look it, they're super, super thick. And they crawl like kind of on the ground. You can see this one, it's like along the bottom of the pot. Very cool. We have a white ghost euphorbia that I got from Plant Shop Chicago. Started just a little baby. Up here we have some Apuntia that are growing really long. They need a little bit more light. I feel like these guys need direct sun in order to grow those really cool thick pads. We gotta get this guy 
maybe outside in the sun. This one is pretty cool. I just got this recently. There, put the label in front so you can see it. It's another Apuntia and it's a spineless Apuntia, which is really cool. I mean, it has no spines and I like that. <laughs> this is not a cactus. I'm not sure what this is. Anybody know? Leave it in the comment section below. This is an Astrophytum ornatum, which is a different type of looking cactus. I think this is really cool. It's got very pronounced spines and it almost looks like it's covered in mealybugs, but I promise it's not. <laughs> it's just the skin of the cactus. Okay, down here we have the red torch cactus. There's the name back there. And this guy is really cool. I've had this for quite some time. The spines are fierce on this guy. Here is the beloved booby cactus. She's doing so well. Got this on Etsy a few months ago, and it loves this spot. Okay, these two back here, one's in terracotta, one's in a glass fish bowl with no drainage, and it just literally keeps on growing, which blows my mind. These are Pilo Sirius cactus. There's the name of these guys there, so you can have it. Ow! They're pokey. When they stretch like that, they're obviously looking for more light, but I kind of think that it's cool when they do that. I don't know, maybe it's just me. This is a feather cactus. So it's just like a little ball. We lost some stone there. Let's cover that up. Here's another little succulent. Another one. Here is the same Apuntia as in that jar there. This is uh, the Apuntia Cochinillifera. Cochinillifera? I got this when it was just this one pad down here, and then this, this, and this grew all within a year. Never been outside. And it's getting a little baby right there, I just noticed. Look at that, a little baby. This is my old man of the Andes cactus. I got this cactus in Arizona visiting in Tucson. And I also bought this pot with it and I think it just looks so cool together. Here is my Copper King Ladyfinger Cactus. She's cute. Here's another Astrophytum. This is a Bishop's Cap. This is really, really cool. I love this one too. This, is, this just doesn't have the spines. I'm not sure if it's going to get spines. I'm gonna say no, I don't think so. Here is a young old man. <laughs> cactus um it's just juvenile so it's still in its baby phase that's probably what it'll grow up to be <laughs> young old man that's redundant okay i call this one my bergia because i cannot pronounce how to say that it doesn't look like a typical cactus i just think it's so cool they almost look like paper spine. This is a Peruvian apple cactus, which is a pretty cool name. It almost looks like a Mex Mexican fence post, but it's not. It's what it was labeled as. And I looked it up and it looks just like that, so. All right, these here are better known as pine cone cactus. This one's growing a little baby up top. And then those are also pine cones. I just wanted to pot them up in separate containers just because this one in front was a little bit larger than the ones in back. I like the different terracotta and sometimes I like to grow the same plant in different pots just to see how they grow and how they do on their own. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. This one I just got too. This is also a spineless cactus. There's the name of it. Intermis? Intermis. And I love how smooth this cactus looks. You guys, if you guys have any recommendations on spineless cactus or euphorbia, let me know because they're just so cool. And while I love the Pokey Boys, I just, some, you know, I just don't like to touch them. Some people could just go up to them and touch them and I'm like, no, not me. This is another one I absolutely love. This is the Mammillaria, no, oop, focus on that. You can see it back there, right? Okay. Also a really cool plant. The spines, and then it's got like some fuzzy spines in there. The top has a little bit of red. I absolutely love this one. Here is my Euphorbia African Golden Candelabra. This one is really cool because it's like a lime green, almost white. And it somewhat reminds me of the White Ghost, just the variegation of it. I love how 
pale the bottom of this is. It's Euphorbia. There's the name of it. Sorry for the shaky hands. This is all handheld, guys. Okay, let's go over to the ones on the wall now. Up here, hanging from the ceiling, is my rat tail cactus that has gotten very long and very wonky. This, you could tell, <laughs> I got it when it was about up to here. And you can kind of tell when I brought it outside, I had it outside for a while, this chunk here of the foliage is thicker because it was outside in the sun. <laughs> and then the bottom, look at how skinny it is. Oh, it needs to get back outside. But I just think it's cool. I like how it grows like that. It grows really weird. Here is another form of a rat tail cactus. And you can tell it's just a thicker version, but you can also tell, because I had this outside, where the new growth is. It's a lighter green and it's thick in some spots and then it gets pointy because after I brought it in, it started grow. It still grows throughout the winter, but it just grows leggy because it's searching for light. But I like how it just looks like a spider. <laughs> and another reason I don't like bringing them outside is because my squirrels apparently like to attack my cactus. Just weird. This is a little Gasteria, little warty hanging in the window there. And then we have a soapbox yucca here that's hopefully growing from seed. And then here we have a Euphorbia Good Luck Royal Red. This whole top section is new. I've had this for about a year now. Last summer, I believe, I got it. It's really cool. Got some incense back there too. Best kind. This is a Euphorbia Lactea. They're babies. This is my blue candle cactus. I got this from my mom's um, landscape in Arizona. And it's just so awesome. I was thinking of bring it out, bringing it outside, but it's so perfect and I don't want the squirrels to attack it. So I don't know. Hopefully it'll be happy in this window. Here is a cactus that has no name. It almost has a blue hue to it. And it's just so gorgeous. There's the number. So you might be able to find it that way. But it's so pretty, I absolutely love this. Now this one was labeled a Mexican fence post, but I don't believe that it is. I'm not sure, it almost looks like that Peruvian apple that I have, but it's also from my mom's. And it's just really pretty, I love it. This one here, there's the name of it. This one is a Mexican fence post cactus. Look at the detail in that. Oh, it's just so pretty. I absolutely love this one. It's a baby. Can't wait till it gets bigger. Okay, this is another Astrophytum. This looks like a little button cap. There's the name of it. Let's see. There you go. And it's really cute. It's also spineless, so you can just run your finger over it and it won't poke you. I like how it looks with the white stone. This is my fairy castle cactus. I got this a while ago and it's still doing really well. I love this thing. It has a whole bunch of little babies on it. Really cute. Okay, this is my hostii and I like to call it my meaty cactus because this thing is juicy. It looks like it's super thick and juicy, but it's not. <laughs> That's the name of it. Very pokey. This is my Horida. Here's the name of it. It's a Euphorbia. It's got black spines. And it also has two little babies down there. I don't know if you can see them. Some stone on it. But how cool is that? It's almost like a black red spine. This is my Eve's Pin, also known as a Christmas cactus. That's the species name. It's a monstros, and it has like a rubbery spine to it, which is kind of cool. Bunch of babies down there. All right, here is my Mammalaria. There's the name. This one has spines. It almost reminds me of like a pincushion cactus because the spines are so close together, and they kind of curve. I don't know if you could see that. So pretty. And down there we have an Easter cactus. 
and a red Christmas cactus. They're in super tiny pots, they're little two inch pots. Okay, that's the first shelf. Now let's go down to the second shelf. Here is an Apuntia prickly pear that I recently just got and it had some blooms coming in there. I wonder if they're still gonna bloom. But this thing is so prickly. I think this is the version that can stay outside that's cold hardy. I'm not 100% certain, but I think it is. There are some Apuntia that can withstand frost, which I think is awesome because they grow in Chicago. And I just recently found that out. Here's my Euphorbia obesas, obesa, obesa. One is female and one is male, and I can't tell you which one is which now because they lost their blooms, but I can tell when they bloom. Um, and it's really cool. If you want some more information on these, go check out my video that I did when I visited Tucson with Adam and Becca. And I got these at um, a place down in Tucson. Okay, these are both the same. I got these from Ikea, believe it or not. And these are the Echinopsis. These are really cool because they have like these clusters at the bottom, but then at the top, they're more smooth-like, which I think is really cool. It's different. Almost looks like a skirt. <laughs> All right, this is another Sirius. This is a Peruvian Sirius. It has red spines too. Here's another old man. I got this one from Ikea too. Should put my old men together. This next one is a rickrack cactus or a fishbone cactus. There's the name of it. And it is growing like crazy here. I love this. I'm thinking of putting this in a hanging planter and hanging it by the window because they like to grow over the pot. It's my little neon cactus light. Here's another Horida, a different kind. This is a Euphorbia. And again, with those cool growth patterns, it almost looks like it's gonna spiral a little bit. It's not a spiralis, but that would be cool if it did a little, did a little curve. The sides here look, look a little curvy. All right, this one I absolutely love. I got this in Tucson. This is my Fredericii. There's the name of it. And the pattern on this cactus is unbelievable. I like the fuzziness in the center of the spines and that veining. Look at that. How cool is that? This is probably my favorite bishop's cap because it's tall and it, it's even buried more in the soil. So it's taller than it appears here. But look at that. How pretty is that? Look at the markings on this. Gorgeous. A little smudged. Okay, this one here is a stenocactus. They also call these, here's the name of it. But these are also called brain cactus. And brain cactus come in many different forms. But as you can see, the rippling of it, it's almost got like a wave to it. I think they also call them wavy cactus. Oh, it's so pretty. I love love how this one grows okay and back here is my zigzag euphorbia it's hard to read the label but it's zigzag euphorbia and the markings on here are so pretty it's pretty tall all right back here last one on this shelf is called the Sirius. hold on let's see there you go it's a ming thing this one's fun for halloween I'm using it in like a halloween planter which i did have a video of that somewhere. <laughs> but I love how these grow too. And don't let them fool you. They look smooth, but there are spines in there. Okay, over here on the wall, I have another Easter cactus, but it's in Lekka. And this is an experiment that I'm doing. I was sent this from Adrian over at Wallflower District. And I have a couple other Easter cactus, but they're not in Lekka. And so far, it's really happy. Hanging up here is my dog tail cactus. And this guy I think should go outside because he hasn't been growing very much, except for these two long pieces here. But he'd probably benefit outside. And here is a Thanksgiving cactus, or is this a Christmas cactus? Gosh, I can never remember. But I absolutely love the markings on it. It's almost got some red stress from the sun. 
so pretty. I hope you can see these. These are my cactus gardens and they don't have labels in them because I kind of just mashed a whole bunch of plants together. You know there's some calamars, there's an old man cactus in there. This one is really pretty. There's just a whole bunch in there. Um, and I love this thing. This I created this about a year and a half ago and I got all of these cactus from CVS. They all look like they were on their deathbed. Some of them have some sun damage. I used to think that was scale but it didn't pass on to any other plants so I'm convinced it's sun damage. <laughs> I asked so many people but I just love these. I think I might take the stone out and replace it with lava rock but other than that these guys are super happy and I do bring these out for the summer so you're getting ready to head outside. All right guys, that's about it. I wanted to mention really quickly, if you like the stone that you see here, the white stone, I have this linked in my Amazon store. And then I also have a huge terracotta pot filled with this lava stone. And this is from Bonsai Jack. And I'm gonna link this in my Amazon store below too. This is, um, Again, it's lava stone. You can pot with this stuff too. So I'll mix this with my cactus soil and then I'll also use it as a top dress. And it just, it looks gorgeous and it really makes for a healthy cactus. Ooh, all right guys, that was quite a tour. Quite a tour with no eyebrows, that's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know you guys were asking for this tour so I'm happy I'm finally able to get it out. Um, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you know any cactus that are spineless or euphorbia that are spineless or any ones that you think that I would really enjoy, please leave the name of them in the comment section below. I'm always looking to grow my cactus collection and I visit Arizona, well, pre-pandemic. I visit Arizona quite often and I'm constantly going into shops just to see what new cactus they have. So I'd love to hear your opinions on cactus if you have any. Thanks again guys and I will see you in my next one. Bye!